Hey everyone, we are excited to give you a closer look at Rainbow Six Extraction. In this co-op PvE experience, elite Rainbow Six operators take on a new terror, the Archeans. Whether you go it alone or in a squad of three, no incursion is ever the same. Dynamic variables change every time you enter a map, so you'll need strong team strategy and communication to make it out alive. You choose from 18 elite operators, each with their own unique abilities, progression paths, play styles, and customization options. Build the right team to complete your mission with over 800 possible squad combinations. Create new entry points with Habana's sticky explosives, or find cover using Capitao's smokescreen. And yes, Tachanka's mounted LMG is back. The alien threat has resurfaced in San Francisco, New Mexico, Alaska, and New York. These four regions host 12 large-scale environments, all at least three times bigger than most Rainbow Six Siege maps. You'll fight through ruined casinos and hotels, overrun research centers, and a ravaged Liberty Island, with objectives, enemies, and modifiers that change with each playthrough. You'll need to adapt your strategy to each of the 13 high-stakes mission types that await you. Lure an Archean into a high-tech trap to capture it alive. Or destroy contaminated nests and extract intel. If an operator falls behind enemy lines and fails to extract, they go MIA. Your team will have to re-enter the containment zone and go all or nothing to earn back your fallen operator, along with all their valuable gear and upgrades. React Medical will take it from here. React Tech brings a new arsenal of weaponry and gadgets to give you a tactical advantage. Pinned down by multiple enemies, the field wall will block any parasite projectiles unleashed in your direction. Being charged face on, glue grenades will temporarily slow down the parasite's movements. Racing to safety after a buffed mission, the React laser will destroy any black sprawl in your path. With 25 different types of gadgets and over 65 custom-designed weapons, how you decide to strategically engage the enemy is entirely up to you. Consuming the environments, a variety of parasitic threats deliver challenging and unpredictable gameplay moments. These 13 diverse and lethal enemy types have their own abilities and randomly occurring mutations, leading to intense, one-of-a-kind engagements. As you progress, you'll come to face the most dangerous enemies in the game, the Proteans. These parasites mimic our operator's form and DNA in a shocking and deadly fashion. Every time you complete an objective, your squad must make a difficult decision. Extract to bank your progress or push to the next zone to face tougher enemies, uncover new intel, and earn greater rewards. But be warned, risking it all could have deadly consequences. We have an operator in stasis. Completing objectives allows you to advance your operator's gear, weaponry, and abilities in an entirely new way. Whether you're upgrading Sledge's hammer to stun tougher enemies, or leveling up Vigil to cloak your entire squad, who you choose to progress is completely in your hands. With each new milestone, you also gain access to permanent unlocks like maps, operators, gadgets, and lore, as well as higher difficulty levels and new cosmetics. With free post-launch content and game-changing thematic events, plus a ranked mode for competitive players, we can't wait for you to experience exactly why your team is your greatest weapon.
Hi, I'm Daniel, assistant producer and senior QA at Drinkbox Studios. And I'm Josh, a fellow QA person here at Drinkbox. We're here to show you some gameplay of our action RPG, Nobody Saves the World. You play as nobody, who discovers that the evil calamity has reawakened, just as the ultra-powerful magician Nostromagus has gone missing. Ah! You're trying to locate Nostromagus to get his help, but in the meantime, you find his wand, which lets you transform into a bunch of different forms. That's right. As your forms level up, they unlock new abilities and even more forms, which you can see here. They level up by completing quests, which are these little challenges tailor-made for each form that you do as you go through the game's many dungeons. And let's fast forward a little and take a look at one of those dungeons right now. We're in this sort of gritty jail area called the Clank at the moment. Right, and as you can see here, this game has online co-op. When you're in co-op, the game gets a little harder to compensate for having two players. Daniel is using the rat form, and I'm using the horse. Together we make a pretty mediocre petting zoo. Oh, a beautiful, mediocre pair of animals. <laughs> I'll be able to unlock another ability for the rat if I complete one of the rat's quests. And there we go. The rat's ranked up, and I've unlocked a new skill. This is one of my favorite skills in the game, Detonate Poison. The rat is really good at poisoning enemies, and this skill lets me basically blow up any enemies that are poisoned all at once. It's pretty powerful. So one of the major concepts of Nobody Saves the World is that once you unlock customization, forms can equip abilities from all other forms. This lets you create a lot of really interesting synergies between skills. I'm just going to go into the menu for a second, and I'm going to give my horse the ranger's poison tipped ability, which makes all of my attacks apply poison. The horse's gallop ability lets it run around super fast and damage enemies it hits, so I'll be able to poison them really quickly, and then you can detonate even more enemies. Nice. <laughs> That's pretty great, but we can make it even better. Like, I can equip Quick Cooldown, which will lower the time it takes to use Detonate Poison again, so I can use it more often. And I can put Stat Explosion on my horse, so that I trigger an extra explosion immediately when poisoning enemies. Two explosions per enemy sounds pretty good to me for sure. Oh yeah. So this was just a couple of examples of how we could quickly synergize both our builds to play off each other, but there's so much more to discover in the final game. Totally, and by playing in co-op, you basically double your opportunities of making wild combos happen. Thanks for your time, everyone. We hope you check out Nobody Saves the World when it comes out in early 2022. Oh, please. Come on. Whatever. Ricky and Cuneo! They've been kidnapped! I'm coming, Cuneo! Oh, Ricky, I'll save you! <laughs> Stay down! I'll kill this guy's face! Get over here! What up, bro, Seth? Ready to break a leg? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, let's do this. We'll find whoever took our boyfriends and beat them into the street. Yeah, what she said. I'm Wing Jammer Legend Gary Spock. You know that. Wing Jammers is an amazing sport that you can try right now for free and for a limited time during this open event. Today, I'm gonna teach you all the tricks I've learned over the years so you can become the best Wing Jammers player in the world. Right on. First, let's review the basics. Don't worry, Wing Jammers is pretty simple to play. Obviously, you need to know how to move your character, and throw the disc back. Careful, you can't move once the disc is in your hands. To curve your shots, just make a curve with your joystick. Okay, now let's see these moves in action. 
The object of Windjammers is simple. Throw the disc into your opponent's goal zone while defending your own. The first player to reach 15 points or have the highest score when time runs out wins the set. Win two sets and the match is yours. You get three points if your disc hits the ground zone and five if it hits the red zone. If your opponent doesn't catch the disc while it's in the air, you'll score this. Another great way to get points is to jump. Catch the disc in the air and smash it to the ground! Miss four points. If you press the right buttons just before catching the disc, what? you can launch special attacks that are real game changers. Pressing square gets you a slap shot that quickly whips the disc back at your opponent. These super fast shots are a great way to catch your opponent off guard. Pressing circle triggers a drop shot. These are really useful against players who like to defend in the back of the court. With the right timing, standing still and pressing X will send the disc airborne. We'll call this a toss. After executing a toss, you have three super moves to choose from. You can launch your unique special move by pressing X and moving your joystick up or down. But if you do a half or a quarter circle move with your joystick while pressing X, you'll activate the super spin. Three points. You can also press circle after it talks to unlock a super lock, which lets you hammer the disc right into your opponent's goal. Three Way to go! Timing is crucial if you want to match your these points, but they are definitely worth it. Every time you throw the disc, your special move meter gets a little bit full. When it's completely full, it's ready to use. Special moves can also be used on defense. For example, if you launch your special move when you're not holding the disc, you can trigger a special defense move that's perfect for escape and tricky situations. Well, that's it. I've just told you everything you need to know about Green Jammers. Stay hungry and see you on the court. Right on. Legionari, at attention. Welcome to Legio Wittrix. We are the spearhead of Rome. Undefeated. It is our duty and our privilege to bring the enemies of the Republic to their knees. None can withstand the might of Rome, and we are the incarnation of that might. Today, I will teach you how to fight for your Republic. We will start with the basics. During each turn, you can advance across the battlefield, activate a skill, and use one tactical item. How far you'll be able to move depends on your armor. Light chainmail lets you move more quickly, but a heavy lamella keeps you alive. There's always the option to move further, but then you won't have time to attack that turn, so don't get isolated behind the enemy lines. <laughs> I know that look. Some of you have seen battle before. You know all this. <laughs> Very well. Here's something new. In Rome, there are no default attacks, so don't expect to just be hacking away mindlessly at the enemy. Your available attacks are based on your equipment and your character class. The weapon's attacks are randomized, and with seven different weapon types at your disposal, each with their own wide range of attacks, you'll have plenty of opportunity to get creative. Remember, a predictable soldier is a dead one. Once you learn what fighting style you favor, you can use the armory here in the outpost to customize a favorite weapon, or craft a brand new one. Remember, you're a unit. You have to learn how your skills work together to seize victory for your legion. No permanent damage. Take my gladiator friend Bestia, for example. The man has a flair for the dramatic. He likes to call out an enemy to duel them during battle. If he gets a good hit in, he can stun his opponent. 
setting them up for a fatal death blow from our Medicus, Cinerus. Now, the most important weapon you'll have is the Scutum, your shield, my personal specialty. Arrows stand no chance against a sturdy shield, but multiple melee attacks can wear down your shield armor until the beginning of the next turn. Don't just think about your shield as a wall to hide behind, though. In the right hands, it really can be a weapon in the most literal sense. I personally send many a barbarian to his afterlife with a strong shield bash. That should be enough to see you through your first skirmish, but there's much more to learn. You'll have to familiarize yourself with the famous Roman Pelum, which is thrown at enemy heavy infantry to disable their shields. You'll have to learn to adapt your tactics and your formations to different environments. Fighting in the cramped interior of a Gallic hut is very different from meeting your enemy on a wide open field. And of course, at the end of each campaign, a spectacular siege of epic proportions awaits you, where different units of the Legion will work together to breach a fortified enemy city from multiple fronts. Time to get out there and make your legatus proud. Roma Invicta!